EDC scissors. This is probably the most requested video I have ever had. And we're not just going to cover standard scissors. We're going to go everything from electrician scissors to medical shears to pocket knife scissors to multi-tool scissors. We're going to do the full deal. And on top of that, we're actually going to test it against the gauntlet. What is the gauntlet? 10 items plus a precision test that are going to tell us how good it really is. So let's go ahead and take our very first look at the scissor gauntlet. Now these materials were designed specifically to test a scissor. And so I have excluded things like hard plastics, zip ties, and otherwise because those require quite a bit of leverage and are really best cut with diagonal cutters or snips. So in this, we have thin materials that could potentially get in between the scissor blades. We have stretchy materials that are gonna give the scissors a headache. We also have sheer fabrics that are going to generally not cut cleanly. So all of these are really, really good tests for a variety of different scissors. On top of that, we also have heavily abrasive resistant materials like Dynama. So this 150 pound test is a really, really good one to see how sharp scissors are. Now, level six, we have something really cool. It's not paracord, this is called survivor cord. And inside, in addition to the seven normal strands of nylon, you also have copper wire, waxed jute, and some monofilament fishing line. So this one's a little bit harder to cut and is a really, really good test of scissors. On top of that, we are gonna have some really, really tough materials that most scissors won't go through cleanly, starting with some silver TheraTube, some seatbelt material, thousand pound tensile strength. We have Kevlar fabric as well. Now, I don't know exactly where these rank as far as difficulty for the scissors. So we might be moving them around as far as level is concerned, but I really like the selection of materials as they test different aspects of them. And then of course the final level and this is 3,333 pound <laughs> pallet straps. So these are no joke, very, very thick, very hard to cut cleanly and they are gonna put a major test on these things. Now let's go ahead and talk about the precision test. The point of this is to see how well the tip of the scissor is able to cut something without actually damaging anything around it. So you get up close, snip one of the strings and leave the rest alone. So that's actually quite a difficult test and not every one of them is going to pass. Now during the test, we're going to apply what I'm calling the two finger rule. That means that we have to suspend it in air holding just two fingers and we have to cut it both in the middle and at the end of the scissor. That's gonna give a total of two points. If it can cut it all the way through cleanly without deforming in any way, it will get two points. If it can cut it, but not all the way, it'll get one. Now this test isn't going to mean anything if we don't have something to compare it to, which is why I selected these very specific pocket knives, starting with the 58 millimeter Alox Classic. This is the thinnest and lightest scissor that is made by Victorinox. And that matters because their scissors are without a doubt, some of the best in the multi-tool world. And that also includes the Swiss card. Now the Swiss card is unique and I picked it because it has the ability to be carried even in non-permissible environments. All you have to do is take out the blade and leave it at home. And if you can do that, then it's worth carrying this over other options. It's also gonna have a pressurized pin, a tweezers, pin, magnifying glass, et cetera, et cetera. So it has to beat this first and foremost as a scissor. And then of course we have the Victorinox Compact 91 millimeter. When it comes to density of tools, it's very difficult to beat this. And I'm going to guess I haven't done the test yet, but I'm going to guess this is going to be a performer at all of the gauntlet items. Only time will tell, but all of the scissors that we are testing today and in the future have to compare to this one because it is so light and so compact. You may as well carry this and something else if the scissors do not compete.
Now we are going to go ahead and start this off with the reference tools beginning with the 58 millimeter. Now this is a very, very compact tool. It has a file, it has a little, small little blade, it has a flathead that is also a two dimensional Phillips, and of course it has a scissor. So really, really compact version of a pocket knife. Oh yeah, we'll be talking about what that green button does in a minute. Now, one thing I wanted to refer back to, because I realized this after going through the entire gauntlet, that maybe I should buy a brand new 58 millimeter scissor to compare and actually run through the gauntlet, because I feel like because this is the one that I keep in my hat, maybe it's not the sharpest because I've used it so much. So we'll probably be redoing this test specifically in the future. Yeah, this string is way harder to cut than I realized. Total fail. Oh, come on. Just having a little fun. It's not even cutting Total the paracord fail. as well as I remember 58 millimeter scissors cutting. So I definitely want to try it with a brand new pair as well. Or just sharpen this one and then go from there. Now I will say both the seatbelt and this are possible to cut, but they're not ideal. Total really fail. could be better. But the good news is the tip, very, very precise. Now if it's able to accomplish the precision task, we will give it a plus on top of the number it could cut in the gauntlet. So in this case, nine plus, okay, not great. Now we're moving on to the Swiss card. Now the Swiss card has many different variants. This particular one is called the Swiss card light. So it has a small flashlight, a magnifying glass, a four way screwdriver tool, pressurized pen, tweezers, pin, knife, and scissors. A lot of tools in something that actually does fit in the wallet, which is kind of amazing. So we are including this because it offers the cutting power of a Victorinox scissor, but in a form factor that is pretty much inexcusable. There's no one who can't fit this somewhere on their person. And that's kind of why we're using it. And even if knives are not allowed, you should be able to still carry this item just without the knife. Now the problem with these scissors has nothing to do with its ability to cut so much as it has to do with the fact that it's hard to hold. Now I'm sure there's a better way to do it than I'm doing it, but yeah, I would. that's the only thing that's the downside here. It cuts really well. Um, very few things were able to cut the Dynama, but really, really good nonetheless. Like it cuts through the paracord quite easily, and that's why I think I need to retest that 58 millimeter as well.
Yeah, I'm having a lot of trouble with the seatbelt, and it's not even that it can't cut. I'm having trouble holding on to the scissor as I'm doing it. And so I'm sort of forcing the seatbelt into the blade. Not an ideal way to do it, and so I eventually give up and just start kind of, you know, pushing it back and forth. So it can certainly cut the material, it's just not an ideal thing to do, especially with how hard it is to hold on to it. Probably worth getting something like a 74 millimeter if you don't mind having the knife blade. And of course, we're not even gonna try this, no. Now I do apologize if it's a little hard to see, but it did work. So this is gonna get 13 plus, good job. Now if there was a gold standard for scissors, the 91 millimeter Victorinox has gotta be it. This is actually a brand new compact, so it's gonna really put up some great numbers. It's gonna have a blade, it's gonna have a combo tool with a can opener, bot opener, flathead, pair of scissors, corkscrew, parcel hook, with a nail file. It's gonna have a toothpick, a pair of tweezers, a small needle, a small flathead for your glasses, a pressurized pen. I mean, my goodness, the amount of functionality in this thing is unreal. And it's light, which, yeah. All I can say is if it's going to be carried and be worth carrying, it's gonna have to provide some advantage over this one. Now there are tasks that this scissor isn't great at, and so maybe you need those types of tasks. This is going to be a great baseline, so I'm curious to see how it actually does. You know, after doing the test with the smaller scissors, this just feels so much more comfortable. Not only does it go through the material really easy, it's super comfortable to hold, comparatively. Now I really wasn't even gonna attempt this with the Swiss card scissor, but this cut just fine. All right, with that, we have our baseline 15 plus. That's a good number to have to beat. Now, before we get started talking about the different independent scissors, let me say that this is going to be a very long video. So rather than going through the whole thing, feel free to use the chapters or go to the end and start with the overview and conclusion and then select the scissor you're looking for in the chapter selection. It's gonna be a little bit easier if you're only interested in one or two of them. Just thought I'd mention. Now the Fisker's folding scissor was something I knew I had to be testing because they are so easy to get on a keychain. They're light, they're compact, they have no sharp edges sticking out. They basically are their own sheath. So really interested to see how the performance turns out. So close, but man, that Dyneema really makes it hard on these scissors. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're not going to give a point for that. I gotta say, this Fisker scissor is really performing above my expectations. At only $7, so far, I'm really, really liking it. I mean, it even cuts through the Kevlar like nothing. The performance on this thing was absolutely excellent. For the price, I don't think it's going to get beaten, at least in this list. Now the next pair of scissors were suggested by a friend on Instagram. And what I like about these is they actually have almost parallel handles. So they're very, very comfortable to use and they can apply a lot of leverage. Short blade, long handle. So really curious and they also spring loaded, which is quite interesting. The latch is the little bit of icing on the cake so you can put it directly in your pocket without having to worry too much about it. Now it really feels like this is the thread that separates all the scissors. For some reason, some do it very well and some can't do it at all. This scissor actually did a very good job on this thread. Now I kept trying to cut the paracord because the first cut looked clean and then the rest didn't work. So yeah, I'm not giving it a pass on this one. Now it's kind of at this point that I realized there is so much more going on with scissors. I would have expected these scissors to cut through the Kevlar and it could basically not even rip the thing, which is really surprising. Well, that was a little bit of a disappointment. I would have expected these scissors to do far better than I actually had it perform. A 10 for something this heavy and robust is quite surprising. The next one is a compact medical shear by one shear. Now this is the mini variety it is DLC coated. It has an oxygen wrench one serrated blade, one non-serrated blade. It's also not going to poke holes in your pocket because of the curved end. So I was really excited to test this. Now, this is a great reason why it's good to go back and look at your work. I was extra critical of this particular scissor for God knows what reason when I did this. And I'm going to override some of my recommendations as far as points are concerned. So for this, I'm actually going to give it a two because I wasn't this critical with pretty much any other scissor. And the same thing with the Jersey Knit. It cuts it very cleanly, except at the very end where it is pinching. And I was not being that critical with any other scissor.
So two for this as well. The importance of a really comfortable handle cannot be understated. When I was doing tests with this particular medical shear, I found that the thickness of the handle really made it comfortable for me to put a lot of force into it. Nothing bit into my hand. And I really like that it also glows in the dark. This is the special edition version. It cut through most of the materials obscenely well. I have no idea why I continue to make cuts with this to try to prove something, but this is definitely a two. Compared to the other scissors and how easy it went through the seatbelt material, it's definitely a two. So yeah, I'm not sure what I was trying to prove here. I think I was trying to figure out whether the tip, the absolute tip of it could cut, and yeah, it cuts great. Now with my correction, it comes out to be a very, very solid 18. I cannot ask for more and obviously it's not going to work with precision test Total fail. now the next one is the slip and snip scissor try saying that five times fast it is made in the united states and is very very compact it has no sharp edges when it's folded up and it's made in steel i will say this the performance of this scissor greatly disappointed me and you're going to see why Yeah, I wasn't even gonna bother trying that last one, but I was kind of hoping it would also work as a precision scissor. Turns out it does not. Total fail. Now, when we talk about EDC scissors, this may be a bit of a stretch, but it has a nice sheath that has uh, the ability to clip onto your belt and that can come off so you can stick the entire thing in your pocket. And you definitely want a sheath because these things are sharp. I mean, very, very sharp. So. I was pretty excited to be able to test these. They're not as expensive as you might expect. Under $30, but the quality cannot be understated. Now, for some reason, when I clipped this, 
I cut out the part where it cut perfectly in the middle, but just trust me, it cut this thing like it wasn't even there. So I was very, very happy for that performance and I was cool to be able to give that a two. Now at this point I'm getting quite excited because we're darn close to a perfect score. But I don't think there will ever be a scissor that will cut through this cleanly. So 19 is incredibly respectable. And can it precision cut? I mean it's very very close but no it cannot. So 19. Basically what is a perfect score for these items. Now, one shear sent me all three models, but we're only testing two, one of which is this Pro, and this is the thickest, heaviest duty version of their medical shear. So between the Mini and the Pro, the Eco fits somewhere in between. And we were also going to be able to give away that Eco model in this video, so stay tuned for all the information on that. But once again, the performance here is excellent. It cuts pretty much everything cleanly. Now I am very happy I included this thread because it looks like it's very difficult, but it also annoys the heck out of me that I cannot figure out why some scissors do a good job and some can't. For some reason, this scissor is not having any when it comes to this. It kind of cuts it, but not really. So I keep trying it to see if I can make it work, but no dice. Now, I'm still not 100% sure why it couldn't cut the Dynama thread. That does make it that this scissor actually tested lower than the Mini variety, which is quite interesting. Now, the next pair of scissors are completely different from the ones we've talked about so far. Basically, the pivot is all the way in the back and you press the two sides together to make the cut. What that means is you can put your fingers up very close to where the cutting edge is and control exactly where that cut is going to go. The downside of this, however, is that you're not going to get the kind of leverage you will with something like the Knipex. Different scissors struggle with very different things. And because the pivot is so far back, I think that rubber material gave it a lot of trouble. Okay, can someone explain to me <laughs> why the Kevlar was so hard, but somehow the seatbelt is easier? It goes through this like no problem. 
it's just funny how some scissors perform well on different materials. No, we're not giving this a point. Technically it went through, but no, zero for that. And this is where I was kind of hoping. I thought there's gotta be precision tip, but it could not catch the thread, which was very unfortunate. Total fail. Now the next one is the Klein Electrician Scissor. This is a staple and it's been around for a very, very long time. It is made here in the United States. This is not a testing session that you're going to want to miss. This is probably the standout, the big surprise of the whole thing. Now, as you can see, at this point, I'm getting pretty excited. It's cleanly cutting pretty much everything we have tested in the gauntlet so far. And even with the pallet strap, it wasn't even that hard. Putting icing on the cake, it was actually able to cut one of the threads on the precision test. And it did so without me forcing it. So I was really, really happy with that. I cannot say enough about a $10 pair of scissors that are performing this well. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that it changes its geometry at the end. Okay, okay, it's not really an EDC scissor, but it is a pretty cool shear. It's called the Processor from Gerber. It can come apart and it looks just like the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. What's not to love? You have two edged blades, you have a way to scale fish, a gut hook, a couple of sharp edges. I figure why not? Let's give it a shot. Came with a sheath so you could technically put it in your pocket. So yeah, there. Now, obviously this wasn't designed for these types of materials, but it's performing admirably. The big problem here is that there's a lot of flex. So at the very end, it doesn't cut many materials well. Fine though, for its particular task, and I'm curious to see how it performs when it's being used for what it was originally intended. I wanted to include at least one small embroidery style scissor, or it could be used possibly for hygiene related tasks. Unfortunately, 
What happens when you buy inexpensive scissors at times is you don't get the best performance. On top of that, if I had looked a little bit closer, I would have noticed that the steel on the two different sides of this particular scissor do not come to the same length. Uh, one is was pointier than the other when it was ground. So when we went to do the precision tasks, didn't really perform as I would have expected, especially being that it is a precision tip scissor. And we can also now see why embroidery scissors are not scissors designed for fabric. Those pointy ends get stuck as you are cutting and makes your life very, very difficult. So not a great performer. Just wanted to throw it in there for why you should probably invest a little bit more money if you're going to end up carrying something every day in your pockets. So although it didn't cut it cleanly, I still think it should get a one for the strapping because it didn't feel difficult in the hands. I was very disappointed that it did not in fact have a precision tip and I'd love to do some more precision scissors in the future. So we are also gonna be doing a giveaway. Now one shear sent out these shears to be tested. They didn't say what I had to do with them. So I decided we're gonna go ahead and give away the middle sized variant. This is the Eco, which is a slightly thinner equivalent of the pro which we did test all you have to do to win this is to write in the comments which scissor you would like me to test next that's it and i will do the drawing next friday when i post my next video and i will also list it in the community section and here we have our final results which one surprised you the most i'm really curious I definitely need to retest the 58 millimeter Victorinox. I do feel it underperformed a little bit, but probably isn't going to be any better than the 13 plus provided by the Swiss card. The Fiskars really shocked me with a score of 17 and of course the Klein, which had a near perfect score of 19 plus. Can't get much better than that. Honestly, I did not expect the results we got. I would never have guessed which ones would have performed well, which ones performed badly. I had it pretty wrong, and I'm also really surprised at the items that certain scissors struggled with, and also some that they excelled at. Just proof that there's more to scissors than just length and shape. I mean, there's the thickness of the steel, whether it's serrated or not, the angle of the grind, the angle of the actual cutting edge. There's just so much going on, the heat treatment and so on. So we will be putting all of this information in a spreadsheet that people can actually look at and process so that if you're looking for something for a specific type of task, we have it broken down. I will also be continuing the series with other scissors that I have not had the time to review. This video got very, very long, and if I had done all the scissors, it would have been an hour. We will also be covering multi-tool scissors as well using this exact same gauntlet, and that is what is going to be in the next video. We'll do five to seven of the multi-tool scissors, some of which I think you're gonna be very disappointed in. So thank you for watching this remember that there is a giveaway and we have the information for that down in the description and thanks again for watching you guys have a very good day